Ladies and gentlemen, we seem to be waiting an age for the Radeon Vega graphics cards. Indeed, the GPUs are probably one of the most talked about pieces of technology in several years. With benchmarks, leak specifications, demos, and goodness knows what else flooding the internet over the past year or so, it seems that we just can't seem to get away from them. Currently, we know of a couple of different derivatives, one aimed at the professional market, also known as the Radeon Vega Frontier Edition, and then we have the RX Vegas, which of course are aimed at gamers. My name's Paul, and in this regular to the comp video, we're going to be focusing very much on AMD, and a little bit of NVIDIA, specifically on a series of specifications which have actually been leaked by Apple, of all companies. Then we have a die shot of Vega, which AMD themselves have released. And then finally, we're going to discuss a couple of graphics cards from both AMD and NVIDIA, which are aimed at the crypto mining craze. Because as you probably are aware by now, it's back in fashion to do Bitcoins and mining them. So obviously both companies want to cra uh, cash in on that. But we're going to be starting things out with some specifications that have been leaked. So this all comes down to an iMac Pro and some specs which have popped up on the internet. So what does it actually tell us? Well, a couple of things. With graphics, if you look under specifications, you can look at this yourself, by the way. You can go to apple.com slash iMac Pro. Uh, iMac hyphen Pro to be to be accurate, and they have Vega GPU, Radeon Pro Vega 56 graphics processor with eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory, or configurable to a Radeon Pro Vega 64 graphics card um, with 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. So right there, this is a very good indication of a couple of things. The first is that the card is going to come in two flavors, eight or 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. That it's pretty much well known at this point. We know that AMD have indeed uh, been toying with the idea of giving professionals more memory for obvious reasons. You know, RAM is good and all of that. But the crux of the matter is the naming of these two cards. Radeon Vega 56 and 64. We can most likely presume, uh, we're going to be presumptuous in this video, that these refer to the number of NCUs inside the GPU. For those who don't know, NCU is basically a collection of stream processors. So, as we probably know, or you might know anyway, AMD group 64 stream processors per CU, or NCU in this case, meaning that the full derivative, the 64, will have 4,096 cores. The lower end one will have 3,584 cores. Furthermore, we have some information concerning the performance of these cards, and that is 11 teraflops of single precision performance. And this is on top of 400 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Boom. So what that tells us immediately is a lot of stuff. It, it basically reinforces some of the information we've already had concerning the Frontier Edition, but it also tells us the lower end derivative of the card, the 56, and this very closely, by the way, for those who don't know, mirrors the Fury line of graphics cards. You might recall that those are based on Fiji, and we saw the, the Fury, the Fury X, and finally, of course, the Nanos. And we had a very similar situation in terms of the number of compute units, uh, and obviously the distribution in performance, although obviously it was uh, relative to that architecture, not this architecture. There is also a very small line concerning the performance of these chips. Now, I don't want to make a big deal of this because quite honestly it's very ambiguous. But basically, it says, and I quote, we're considering how much we wanted this iMac to be capable of. It was clear the only one graphics card which chip would, would do it, and that chip didn't exist yet. So the iMac Pro is debuting a new one. The Pro Vega is over three times faster than any previous iMac GPU, packing the power of a double-wide graphics card into a single slot, all of which translates into higher frame rates for virtual reality, real-time 3D rendering, more, right, more lifelike special effects, and gameplay at max settings. It's one huge reason iMac Pro is power incarnate, in quote. And then, of course, you can see the very small diagram they have of the GPU plus the two HBM2 um, dies, and then obviously it reiterates the fact that it's got 400 gigabytes per seconds of memory bandwidths. Now, the reason that's very interesting 
is because if you were to do a bit of googling around with that um the current uh, and feel free to correct me if i'm wrong here this is as far as i'm aware because i'm not exactly a mac head i'm more of a, a windows slash pc gamer but as far as i'm aware anyway the fastest imac gpu is a radeon r9 uh 395x and that has a performance of around the 78 to 7900 in 3d mark so in theory at least this would put this card at um well basically between a gtx 1080 and a 1080 tie the problem is they said over three times faster so obviously over three times faster is very ambiguous like how much is free how much is over is it 3.1 is it 3.000.1 is it 3.5 over doesn't really tell us that much and also it's not telling us the workloads so because there's no information on workloads it could be based upon 3d mark it could be based upon one very obscure benchmark out there it could be based upon the frame rates in doom 1 you know in the uh, you know, running DOSBox, it could be based upon, you know, um, Overwatch, or it could be based upon, I know, 3D rendering. We just don't know. It's a very ambiguous statement. I do, however, feel that it should be faster than the 1080, as I've said multiple times. And the other problem with this statement is it doesn't actually tell us which card they're referring to. Logically, it would refer to the the highest end because obviously that's the that's the seller, right? You're always going to talk about the best performance uh, whenever you're doing marketing. But unfortunately, as usual, your guess is as good as mine on this one. But it's pretty cool stuff. Um, AMD have also seen fit to show us a block diagram, or I guess the um. A rendering it was actually confirmed to be a rendering not an actual image not as in a photograph of the vega die and you can see that it looks absolutely humongous it's not only the of course the gpu itself but you can see the two um blocks underneath i guess what you could call it and those of course represent the hbm2 um hbm2 so this card is going to be absolutely a beast in terms of size and of course, that's because you don't need to worry about GDDR5 or whatever else on the PCB. I think it's fairly evident, and I don't really need to tell you this, but I will just quickly briefly mention that this absolutely stomps on the current Polaris series of cards, for example, the 480 or the 580 in terms of raw performance, and this card, in theory at least, should be aimed upon uh, running games at the highest resolution. I guess the logical thing to conclude this video with... For those who are interested in cryptocurrency, is the fact that NVIDIA and AMD are both awaiting the launch of new cards. And these cards are specifically designed for cryptocurrency mining. They're basically special editions. And this news comes to us from videocards.com. Uh, we don't know a massive amount of news from AMD. All we know is it's Polaris based, so... We can probably say the 570 or 580 or something like that. A very, very quick aside. It's one of the reasons that actually AMD cards are an absolute bitch right now to get hold of. And certainly in certain parts of the world, retailers just basically have no stock. And no, it's not because a driver has suddenly doubled their gaming performance or, or anything like that. And yes, there have been a few price cuts here and there, but it doesn't really explain it. No, instead, it's because crypto currency mining is now becoming a thing again. For those who don't know, Bitcoin prices are going up through the stratosphere. So what happens when that happens? Well, basically, everyone jumps on it and it becomes kind of a thing. I, I'm not exactly a massive miner myself. To be fair, I don't really do it. I know the basics. But basically, because these um, currencies, oh, sorry, these coins are so difficult to produce now, so difficult to discover, it's like one of them has to be valuable enough or they have to become valuable enough for the investment not just in terms of the hardware itself but the actual you know power consumption and everything else that goes along with it so in short now it's becoming well financially viable again to start doing mining so anyway uh, on top of that you've got nvidia who are going to be launching a special edition of a gtx 1060 and it's supposedly going to be using a gp106 100 it's custom it's specific for mining. From what we understand, it's going to have no display disconnectors at all. 
So it's not going to support gaming. In other words, it's going to explode, basically, if you try to run Doom on it. Now, it won't really do that, but it won't run Doom. And these cards will basically only have a 90-day warranty. But they will be cheaper. So from what I understand, anyway, these cards are going to be almost like sold as add-in boards. Um, and it's going to be kind of interesting how that works. I imagine it would almost run like... Um, perhaps multiple cards you could run them like uh like um let's say if you've got like an i5 and you've got like uh, an igp in that you could possibly do that but obviously ideally you could have multiple of those cards and run them in in sequence but it'd be kind of cool anyway i think that's just about it for this video hopefully you've enjoyed it i'll see you soon take care bye for now